Good morning, welcome to Salem Lunacy. I'm Mark, and today we're going to talk about putting a new fridge in our 99 Rialta QD. All right, so this just happened. The fridge is gone. Gone! And now we're trying to figure out what we can find that is more modern and more efficient to fit in the space we have. This is the Norcold unit that came out of the Rialta. It's one of the units that runs off three different power types. It'll run off propane, 12 volt, or 110. Uh, if you own one of these, I don't need to tell you the reasons why we're replacing it. Uh, it worked on all three modes, but they're super finicky. Uh, and mostly, it didn't regulate on 12 volt. And more importantly, it's an energy hog. So these absorption units aren't really efficient. So it had to go. Once you remove the unit, then you've really just got to measure the space of the cavity and then go shopping for air, or shopping for a unit that'll basically fit the space. I will say that the old Norcold, the way that it was installed, they basically built the RV around it. So you've got to come in from the backside and remove screws in the floor that you actually can't access from this side. So it was pretty tough to get the old unit out, but once we got it out, we're able to start to look at what we need to deal with in order to fit a new unit in. Look what just came in the mail. What is it? Well, let's find out. This is pretty exciting. It's a box in a box. Oh, jeez. It's our new fridge. Yeah, that's pretty exciting stuff. We went with a um, marine grade fridge, so no more propane. Running it, it'll be 12 volts or 110. And it's bigger than what came in the RV, believe it or not. So now you just have to install it, right? So now I just gotta install it. That's all, just, just install it, Mark. Done. I don't think it came with a 110 cord. I don't even know that we'll need it, but... Yeah, we shouldn't need it. Ah, the 110 cord's inside. Perfect. Look at that. It has shelves in it. The last one was missing shelves. It has kind of... Oh, it has a baby ice tray. Isn't that cute? That's adorable. Yay! It's magnetic. Oh, that's awesome. The Norcold unit that was installed was a 1.8 cubic foot. What we've decided to go with is this isotherm, which is about 2.3, so it's a little bit bigger. Uh, it's set up so it can be hinged on either side. It's going to fit right into the space with pretty minimal modifications to the cabinet. And this unit runs off of 12 volt and 110. Now, this unit is used primarily in the marine industry. It's got in the back what they call, or what's known as a Danfoss compressor type. Uh, and as opposed to the absorption units, which are really sensitive to being level, I think they had to be within three degrees or they would shut off. These Danfoss modules can run up to 30 degrees off. So we actually had a similar unit in our sailboat and you could, you could run those at pretty much any angle, so you don't have to worry about them being sensitive to where you're parked. The other really cool feature on these units is super low power consumption. We're expecting this, and according to the specs, should it only draw about 2.5 amps when it's running. And if it's like the one on our boat, it would only run about half of the time. So energy usage throughout the day is pretty low. Uh, so we're, looking, we're really looking forward to seeing what, how this thing performs. Uh, the other interesting thing is, too, is you can buy these modules separately, the Danfoss unit and the compressor with a cooling plate. So if you've got a custom area in your motorhome or in your boat that you want to use, you can buy just the module and the cooling plate, and you can make any space a refrigerator or a freezer.
The isotherm unit that we selected is a little bit short for the cabinet space, but we also were able to solve one of the problems that we had in the coach. We had nowhere to store the oven plate or the sink plug, so by making this small platform that's the same size as the opening, it'll elevate the fridge to where it closes out at the bottom of the unit and also gives us a place to store the sink plugs. All right, you'll also notice that I've got a pretty long service loop on this. I'm leaving the long service loop uh, for the main reason is, uh, due to the cabinet design, I don't really have good access to the water filter. So the fridge will have to come out in order to change the water filter. Uh, but as I'll show you in a little bit, that's not a big deal because it's only held in with four flange bolts on that front flange. Right, we're going to do a little test this morning using an amp clamp. If you do not have one of these on your RV or on your boat, I, we highly recommend having one on board. Uh, nothing really makes it easier to troubleshoot electrical issues than a handy amp clamp. Alright, I just started the unit up. Uh, it is currently on 12 volt and as you can see, uh, as advertised, it's drawn anywhere between 2 and 3 amps. Uh, since I just started it up, I'm curious to see where it will settle out, but uh, 2.2 amps, uh, that, that's compared to other uh, Danfoss fridges we've had, that's pretty outstanding. So they've really come a long way with these compressors, and for boondocking, I don't think there's a better uh, fridge system that you can have on your RV. Okay, we have a couple of issues that uh, we got to deal with as far as trimming out the refrigerator on our Rialta install. Uh, one of them you'll notice is here, the cabinet comes out just a little bit further because the previous fridge install was recessed back in the hole. Uh, so we're gonna take care of that just by cutting and painting and installing this style here that'll basically flush it out to the same level. Then we install a bulkhead. This is just kind of loose installed right now. A bulkhead on the other side. And this is going to pull forward and install, as you can see here, it'll pull forward so it is flush as well. Uh, one of the other objectives that we wanted to solve is a water filter install. So you can see we've got that mounted on the back and the bulkhead. Uh, it's not all the way plumbed in yet. I will do that as soon as I permanently install the bulkhead. And then in front of this, in front of the water filter, we are basically going to install this, which is just going to be some cubby holes and uh, separated storage dividers. Most likely will end up being a shoe rack. Alright, so again, this is all kind of loose installed right now. Uh, but that is how we're going to take care of the space. Uh, so we we achieved three objectives, I guess, or four objectives. One, we put a slightly larger fridge in. We've come up with a dedicated storage space for the sink plug and for the range plate, the upper range plate. We've installed a water maker and we've made the best use that we can, at least for now, of the remaining storage space. So here's a little uh, carpentry hack for all you folks that are considering doing this. Uh, you can probably tell from the photos, this is all just roughed out of uh, some pretty rough plywood. And I, I like to kind of build everything out out of plywood, try it for a little while before you make the, uh, before you, that way you can make any adjustments to the design before you do your, uh, your final build out. And the life hack part of that is, is that you never do the final build out. And then anytime you show it to somebody, you can just say, hey, this is a, this is just a rough out test model that I'm trying out, but uh, you know, we're going to tweak the design a little bit and then I'm going to build it correctly or you know build it just to where it's a little bit more polished but uh, don't tell anybody I said that. So here is our nice new isotherm marine fridge installed. Works great, makes ice, keeps everything cold and we have the storage above and below and it is working out really well. <laughs> have another drink. <laughs> All right thanks for watching our latest video. Please like and subscribe. See, it's harder than it looks. <laughs> Thanks for watching our latest video, guys. Um, all of these little projects are fun, but we are super excited to get on the road soon in our RV. If you like what you're seeing, please make sure you subscribe. 
click like and click the bell so you get notifications for our next videos.